Then a natural question is, can we do better than identifying just the Markov equivalence class? So we saw that with the faithfulness assumption, we can identify the essential graph. We can identify the Markov equivalence class of the true graph. But say there's multiple graphs in that Markov equivalence class, can we narrow the class down more? So ideally, we would get to just a single graph. Can we do that? For example, if we make more assumptions? Well, in the setting where we have multinomial distributions, or we have linear Gaussian structural equations, this is the best we can do. We can only identify a graph up to its Markov equivalence class. We can't get anything smaller than that. Okay, but this seems a bit specific, like why are we talking about linear Gaussian structural equations? What if we care about non-Gaussian structural equations, where the, the noise is non-Gaussian, or non-linear structural equations? And the spoiler is that we can get identifiability of the exact graph in those cases, so that's what we'll see in this semi-parametric causal discovery section. It's semi-parametric in the sense that we'll be making assumptions about the parametric form of these structural equations, right? So the sort of functional form of how the data was generated. We saw some examples of parametric assumptions for identifiability of causal estimates, not of graph structures, but of causal estimates, in the week on instrument of variables, for example. So to motivate this section, let's quickly discuss some issues with independence-based causal discovery that we don't that we won't have in semi-parametric causal discovery. The first is that independence-based causal discovery requires the faithfulness assumption, which we saw is maybe sometimes not that attractive of an assumption. It's kind of easy to think up counterexamples to it. Then the next big issue, which we already touched, is that it can require large samples for accurate conditional independence tests. And finally, with independence-based causal discovery, we can only identify up to the Markov equivalence class of the true graph. Whereas with semi-parametric causal discovery, we'll often be able to pick out the exact graph that is the true causal graph, assuming that our semi-parametric assumptions are correct. In the first part of this section on semi-parametric causal discovery, we're going to point out that you can't identify the true causal graph without making any parametric assumptions. So by identifiability here, in this whole lecture, we're referring to identifying the graph, not some causal estimate. And if we want to identify that graph, not just the Markov equivalence class of that graph, if we want to identify the specific graph, we have to make parametric assumptions. So we'll see why that's the case now. First, we'll look at this through the perspective of Markov equivalence. So if we have infinite data, we have access to P of X comma Y. Here we have two variables, X and Y. And say we want to distinguish just these two graphs. Is our data generated by a graph where Y is generated as a function of x, or is our data generated by data where x is generated as a function of y, right? Which causal graph is it? Can we infer that from this infinite data that we have? Well, if we're looking at conditional independencies in the data, no, right? The essential graph, which depicts the Markov equivalence class here, doesn't have the direction of the edge in it. Right. Both of these graphs here, both of these graphs correspond to where we're not making any conditional independence assumptions. So they could correspond to any distribution. And here's the Markov equivalence class for that. That's the perspective on if we can identify which of these two graphs generated this data with two variables from Markov equivalence. But maybe if we look at it from a different perspective, from SCMs, structural causal models, and their structural equations, then maybe we can identify which of those two causal graphs generated our data. Well, unfortunately, it turns out that's not the case. So there's this proposition that for every joint distribution, P of X comma Y, on two real valued random variables, 
there is an SCM in either direction that generates data consistent with that distribution. In other words, an SCM where X is generated from Y could have generated the data, or an SCM where Y is generated from X could have generated the data. So we don't know which variable was generated from which. We, we can't distinguish between those two causal graphs. Mathematically, this is written as follows. So there exists a function f sub y such that y equals f sub y where you feed x and some noise variable u sub y and where x and u sub y are independent. So there exists a function in that direction mapping x to y and similarly there exists a function going the other direction f of x and similarly we have independence here. So there exist these functions that are consistent with the data distribution. We can generate data that is consistent with p of x comma y using either this SCM or this SCM in the opposite direction. So that first one corresponds to this causal graph x to y and then the second one corresponds to this causal graph where there's an arrow from y to x. Either causal graph could explain our data. So here we haven't made any restrictions on our SCMs. The SCMs can be whatever. And when that's the case, we are not able to identify the true causal graph. We can't distinguish between these two causal graphs to know which one is the true one. And in order to do that, we're going to need to make some assumptions about the parametric form. 